And welcome to Up to the Minute. It is Thursday, October the 8th. Can you believe that? We are just moving along with October now. Glad to have you with us. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour and a few special guests. Right now, though, my co-host Brittany Pacheco is joining us from her home studio. Good morning, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd. Happy Thursday, or as I like to call it, the fourth day of hostage. <laughs> there you Told go. Told you. Told you I would tell you what I thought. That about was the surprise for today. There you go. There you go. No, but in all seriousness, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning for Up to the Minute. We're very happy that you're here because we do have a lot of great information to share with you all this morning. As a friendly reminder, please take the opportunity to follow us on our social media pages as well as YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we also need your help as our audience to help grow our audience. So if you share this podcast by clicking that share button at the bottom of the screen, it would help us greatly. We've had the intention of doubling, if not maybe tripling our audience. So you can help by, uh, like I said, sharing that podcast. So be sure to follow social media, share the podcast, and let's get into it. Thanks, Brittany. We'll be back with you in a little while. If you have any uh, social media questions that pop up during the show, make sure to let us know. Uh, we've got a couple of special guests on the show. The first one uh, we're going to introduce right now, Julia Barbosa. And is your name, last name pronounced Landois? Is that correct? Yeah. Got it yes. correct. Hi. All right. <laughs> Julia, welcome to the show. We appreciate you being here. You're a local artist and co-founder of Manteca HTH, also the National Directory of Latinx Artists. We appreciate you being here. We're going to talk about your art, talk about Hispanic Heritage Month, all that and more coming up later in the show. If we could get you to stand by, thanks for being here. Great, thank you. All right, and now we're going to start with our HCC guest. We've got uh, Dana Sturdivant. And Dana, you've been on the show before. In fact, I think last time you were here, were we discussing yoga that was being offered? We sure were. That's right. So you were with the community learning and or community education, I should say. And tell us about community education and community learning programs, what they all entail. So community learning program at HCC is um, offering workshops, non-credit workshops to our community, just as it says. So we're offering these workshops to anyone in the community, youth, adults, senior adults, and of course, not leaving out our HCC family as well. You know, one of the, the thing, the trends which has been happening across the nation, if not across the world during this pandemic, people are getting out in their yards, sprucing up the yards, but also starting their gardens. You know, that's becoming a big deal because people will have, well, you know, a lot of time at home and why not start a garden? You guys have some gardening workshops that you're offering for folks who uh, can learn about getting a green thumb. Right. I'm so excited about that. So actually, it's brand new to us, to, to community learning at HCC. We have uh, developed a partnership with Texas A&M AgriLife um, around this, these gardening workshops. So we're offering, we are uh, just started offering one gardening workshop a month. Uh, we will take off for December and then get started again in January. And we've got amazing speakers with um, the uh, Master Gardeners. And so can you garden in Houston year round? I mean, I know our temperatures are, are great during the, the winter and the fall and the spring, but during the summer, they're pretty brutal. So can you do that year round? I certainly think you can. We, and in fact, the workshops are um, scheduled according to what you should be being at that, what you should be doing at that time. For instance, last month was around fall gardening. We, we, we made it past summer and then we're, they, the speaker spoke all about what you should be planting for um, the fall. And speaking of the speakers themselves, who will we be hearing from? You mentioned Texas A&M. So tell us some of the speakers and maybe some of the things they'll be covering. Yeah, so all of the speakers are part of the uh, Master Gardener Speakers Bureau. Um, each one of them, it takes a different topic, basically, I guess what they are the true expert at. And um, as mentioned, we just have the fall gardening coming up this month in just a couple of weeks is um, the, uh, excuse me, container gardening. I'm super excited about that one because that's definitely something we can do in the Houston area in small spaces. Uh, we have tree planting coming up in December and then January will of course have a, a new, um, a new schedule that's not quite out yet, but it'll include um, 
herb gardening, uh, small space gardening, soils, water conservation, just the whole gamut. Now these workshops, are they workshops where you can interact with the speakers, where they have a Q&A at the end? And if someone doesn't miss the live version, can they watch it recorded online? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things I'm, I'm very proud to say that we're doing in community learning. We're keeping everything live to keep that personal, um, you know, personal connection there. And absolutely, we have it to where, of course, I, I should probably say, of course, they're all online <laughs> as everything is right now, but we still keep it live and we keep it open to questions and um, actually time for questions at the end with, with the contacts and, um, you know, all the all the necessary things that the participants need to um, follow up later. Now, is there a cost for these workshops and how can folks sign up for them? The gardening workshops are free of charge. Thanks to our connection with, with this group, we have a uh, wonderful volunteer speakers. So that, that's really exciting for all of our community. And where can they go to uh, sign up? I imagine is there a link on our website and they do they need to register ahead of time for this? Yes, registering ahead of time absolutely is necessary so that we can get them the correct links to join us and reminders to, to, to be where they need to be. Um, and, and finding the schedule is, is, has become very easy. It's simply hccs.edu slash community dash learning dash workshops. All of our workshops um, around the gardening can be located right there. And we're going to include the, the pertinent links in our social media post for this show. So you guys, right. you guys can uh, uh, find that through our show as well. Um, since this pandemic starts uh, started, have you guys noticed a rise in people wanting to take your classes online um, because they're at home and they may be just looking to learn a few extra things? Yes, I think so. And that's, you know, just kind of like we talked about last time with the yoga, uh, somewhat surprising that people are grabbing on to this online thing. Um, we're really seeing an uptick in the classes that we're able to offer online. Um, and, and around this gardening, just blown away. Our first session had over 100 participants wow. for it. So that one is real. I think people are interested in what can they do at home. And the, let's go back to the yoga because that was a great show when we talked about yoga. You had one of your instructors on as well. That really took off and you kind of mentioned you were surprised at how well it had been doing um, with yoga sessions online. It seemed like everybody wanted to get a little exercise, um, you know, focus and take yoga and we had the perfect vehicle for them to do so. Absolutely. And one of the neat things about it is um, fairly regularly you've got someone who is out of town there um you know the the other participants see that they're in a different location they're in their hotel room in austin they're you know visiting their parents out of state and they can they can keep up with their yoga wherever they are it's the perfect match you know it seems like a lot of these online uh, exercise classes have been popular over the several months because for a while gyms were closed you couldn't have in-person classes so really virtual was the only way speaking of virtual you guys have a number of your offerings online do you see this being the wave of the future because the popularity has been growing for your services and your classes yes absolutely um i, I of course have to say i'm I think, like most people, looking very forward to getting back on campus when we can safely do so. But I really would like to um, have the opportunity to add that online piece as well. To add that, um, uh, you know, the session is going live in in um, class in person, but then we're able to live stream to those who can't make it to our locations. I know our uh, IT department and uh, instructional services has been working on that with placing special cameras in the classroom so we can continue with the online learning and some in face instruction when when that does happen. Uh, so I imagine, uh, you know, the, the the chain has already been set and there are already some uh, placeholders out there to start doing this. Dana, I uh, wish you the best of luck. It's always good to see you. We appreciate you joining us this morning on the show. Great to see you, too. Thanks so much for having me. And as mentioned, the link to finding all the community learning workshops, hccs.edu slash community hyphen learning hyphen workshops. We will have that link in this post of the show. Thanks, Dana. We'll see you again. Thanks. We're going to move on to Julia now. And uh, Julia, welcome back to the show. Um, you are a Houston based artist. Have you always been out inside the Houston area? I have not. I grew up in San Antonio and I moved to Houston a little over three years ago. 
Okay, but you've kind of become ingrained over the past three years. And uh, we want to talk to you because you're a representative of the Latinx community. Maybe you can tell us a bit about that community because some people may not be familiar with the term. Sure, so um, I am a co-founder of an organization called Manteca HTX and it's the first, uh, the nation's first online directory of Latinx artists. Um, it uh, encompasses artists of every discipline from visual, dance, theater, literary, um, cinema, and um, it, was a, it was made as a community building tool. Um, I got together with a bunch of other artists that I had met and, and we felt like um, there were so many of us that there wasn't really a great way to connect the community. Um, and so this was a way for us to, to find each other and also have a way to build collaborations and, and present our work um, for other people who were, who were interested. Since this pandemic started, I imagine you've switched everything online and being an artist, I would imagine, you know, you're, you're, you're best when you're out in the public and being able to talk to people face to face, display your art, talk about your pieces and culture. How do you do that and translate it online? Because we all had to go online about six months ago. How has that been for you? Yeah, um, it's hard, you know, it, it really depends on your media too. I think um, some of the things I do like installation don't, don't translate very well to an online space, but also, um, video so i've been making more video and animation and also seeing some really great um creative solutions from the theater and dance community um in terms of virtual or um going out to people's yards and and doing something or find finding some way to do virtual or socially distanced performances that um is really interesting Tell us about your art for folks who may not be familiar with you, your art. Um, you mentioned you're working with video now and all different types of mediums, but tell us a bit about your art and some of the titles that uh, you have, because I know we're going to be showing some pieces as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, I do work in a variety of media, everything from performance to video to um, installation and works on paper. But um, my latest series is about, time and the cosmos and climate change and kind of how those things um, influence our relationship to the earth. Um, one piece I did called a flood of feelings is a print installation. So it was it was participatory. I, I found this huge cache of um, reproductions of a 17th century print of people and animals getting onto Noah's Ark. And one thing I really love to use is, is repurposed materials. So this was a repurposed material. Um, I silk screened on top of it. And then um, in the exhibition, the, the audience got involved by um, putting some kind of reaction word onto the print. So they completed the piece. Um, and those reaction words about uh, climate change could be anything from, uh, apathy to shock to sadness to uh, the range of feelings that somebody might have and and it was about floods in particular so i also thought it was a really great way in our community to process what we've been going through with catastrophic floods i moved here three weeks before harvey uh, wow. to a neighborhood that got <laughs> catastrophically flooded um so so it was also a processing for me too yeah. and um and then half of the sales of that print uh, go to Texas, which is Texas Environmental Justice Advocacy Services, which is a local environmental justice organization here in Houston. Tell us about a piece of art, which is, it, it kind of piques my interest where the audience rides a stationary bike. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that one also started with repurposed materials, which is cut up old silkscreen prints. And I took these cut out pieces of paper made an animation that looks like um, an infinity symbol and also like an Ouroboros, which is this mythical snake eating its own tail. And um, the projection, the, the, the animation is projected onto the wall and people can get on a stationary bike and their pedaling controls the speed of the animation. 
So they're doing this kind of funny, absurd action of trying to control the speed of infinity. <laughs> and you also Kids really love it too. It, that, I mean, it sounds fascinating the way it's it's set up. Um, tell me also, you're involved with a group called Mecca, and uh, you have um, some programs for Hispanic Heritage Month. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yeah, I'm I'm actually not involved with Mecca, but I'm a I'm a huge Mecca fan, and I work in the neighborhood. Um, Mecca has been a pillar of the community for over 40 years in the Sixth Ward. Um, and they do everything from arts education for youth to um, visual arts exhibitions and also um, world-class music and dance performances. And um, they always have some really great stuff going on for Hispanic Heritage Month and for Dia de los Muertos. Um, like everything, a lot of it is moving online. Um, they do have one in-person event at Talento Bilingue Houston um which is a separate building right and they're having an exhibition of retablos which are little uh folk art paintings on tin and altars for dia de los muertos and then their dia de los muertos festival which is always a really great time they have beautiful dance and and musical performances and altars from people all over the community um, that will go virtual this year so on October 31st and November 1st, they'll they'll have the festival online. You know, speaking of going virtual, we talked about this at the top of your interview, but I want to touch back on it again because there have been, um, I've seen uh, petitions being passed around nationwide to save the arts program, per, per, um, particularly performing arts venues and art exhibition locations because during the pandemic, people weren't able to come back in. Some of them have opened back up and people are still not coming back in. What's your thoughts on this? Because it seems to me from an outsider looking at the situation, I enjoy the arts. I love seeing live music and going to these uh, exhibitions, but it seems they're in dire trouble right now. How do we solve this problem and save our arts? That's a big question. <laughs> um, like I said, I think people are getting really creative uh, with putting things virtually. And I think it's up to the community also to show their love for the arts right now. Everyone wants to be entertained and wants to have um, an emotional connection right now in this time when we're all so separated. And the arts is so often um, uh, a communicator of that. Yeah. And so, um, so reach out to the organizations that you love and support and, and figure out how, talk to them about how you can pay for uh, an online program to watch. Um, some things are going to go hybrid or um, have things like outdoor performances, especially now that the weather is getting nice in Houston. Well, you hope to see more of the outdoor performances and you hope it gets to a point where we, you know, we can we can safely have those. It seems to be moving in the right direction, but I guess as uh, proven yesterday with uh, recent announcements, um, things just aren't there yet, according to our local officials. Julia Barbosa Landois, we appreciate you being here and joining us on the show. Thanks for uh, enlightening us a bit about your art and uh, what's out there right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are going to move on to Brittany Pacheco with our news and announcements for HCC. Brittany, of course, uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, why don't you kick things off talking about today is uh, National Coming Out Day and there's an event happening at 11 a.m. There is, Todd. So join Student Life to celebrate National Coming Out Day with an engaging and enlightening discussion with a panel of local LGBTQ plus panelists to discuss LGBTQ plus rights and issues. So if you're interested in participating in this event, you can go to tinyurl.com slash HCC LGBTQ. It's a lot of letters. <laughs> A lot of letters, but we'll have that link in the show. And it happens not long after we go off the air at 11 a.m. Uh, virtual coffee breaks, talent engagement is holding those. Janet May are, um, and is going to be on there. I think today she's got Dr. Shante Grays, who's our Vice Chancellor of Student Services. And also Joellen, Joellen Saucier, our Executive Director of Financial Aid. Uh, of course, they're connecting with coworkers. We know things can be difficult right now, but 
You can grab a cup of coffee, join Janet May, our Chief Human Resources Officer, and her guest, and to continue learning remotely. I think there's also a way you can uh, ask your questions by messaging them. So Janet usually takes questions, and you can talk with uh, Janet, Joellen, and Dr. Shante Gray. So join them today at 11 a.m. A couple of topics uh, that are very important, one of them being right now, Brittany, mental health awareness. We all need to, uh, to be aware of things because there could be some people who are struggling right now. Absolutely, Todd. Being in quarantine for so long, it puts a lot of strain on a person mentally, physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. So the HSC Northwest Counseling Office is offering a virtual presentation on depression and bipolar disorder. Now, this is in partnership with an organization called Remind. This is happening next Wednesday, October 14th at 2 p.m. It is free and open to the public. We will be sure to include the link to register for this event. It's gonna be a very helpful and insightful event because a lot of people are, are not aware of what mental health is and how everyone really has something that they're struggling with. That's right. And this event is there to uh, make you aware of that. Look for some warning signs. You can also uh, join them. And of course, it's a free event. We're uh, we're holding it through HCC Northwest and we're oh, we're welcome. We're welcoming everyone to join us for this event. Uh, we learned something over the past couple of days, Brittany, didn't really realize this, but financial aid made an announcement. It was confirmed by several other people that uh, they're having in-person appointments on campuses, but you can't just show up, Brittany. You have to plan ahead and make an appointment. Yes, that's right. No walk-in appointments are going to be accepted at this time. So you need to plan ahead, make sure that you call or register, whatever the method is for you to make your appointment ahead of time to be seen in person. So learn more on how to book an appointment online at the link we will post here in our social media. I believe there's a graphic here too that will offer that link as well. So once again, no walk-in appointments are available. You do need to register for your in-person appointment. Twerk out with Rec Sports. There, I said it. HCC Rec Sports has all types of fun, fit, and free events for the fall. They're doing things online right now, virtually, including Minute to Win It Challenge. And uh, it's open to all HCC students, faculty, and staff, but you must use your HCCS email to register. They've got events on uh, today. There's Zumba and Boot Camp. Friday is Twerk Fitness as we like to call twerk out. Uh, that's happening from six to 640, taught by the V sisters. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <laughs> I'm curious, twerk but out. man, I, it takes, takes a very special person to want to participate in something like that. So go you, whoever is into it, Todd. Um, but yes, also uh, Friday, October 9th is the deadline to register for the FIFA 20 Gamer League Challenge. So this is, specifically for students only. The league starts October 13th. For information on this event, go to the HCCS Athletics Instagram and Facebook page. You can also email them at sports at hccs.edu. Students, there's tutoring available for you. If you're struggling in your classes, there's no reason to because we have a tutoring available to you virtually online. Uh, tutors are available to meet with students virtually through Microsoft Teams, thanks to HCC's Academic Success Center's tutors. They'll help you stay on track with your coursework, understand your assignments and improve your study skills. We'll include some links and a phone number so you can get that information uh, in the social media post. Right now, faculty and staff is our all in for HCC campaign. That means we're raising money for the foundation and for scholarships, Brittany. Absolutely. And you've heard me say it a million times, Todd, as a former scholarship recipient from HCC, I can't tell you how much this means to myself and hundreds and thousands of others who are a recipient of a scholarship. So you, as our faculty and staff, can help by signing up for a payroll deduction today to make an impact all year long. This is ongoing until November 6th. That's the, that's the campaign, I mean. Uh, this is happening now through November 6th. You can donate by going to hccs.edu slash all in for HCC. And we want you to share this on social media. So be sure to include the hashtag all in for HCC. 
That's right, Brittany. And we've also got another workshop, Intimacy and Love. Well, actually, this is a scholarship program. You can win $250 as a scholarship by writing a 500-word essay. It's uh, the Counseling Office and the Office of Institutional Equity is sponsoring the scholarship. Share your love for art, prose, and your fellow man in this trying time by applying for the scholarship. Two scholarships will be uh, awarded but you must have a GPA of 2.0 or above to be uh, uh, required to enter this event. We'll have the link for this in our social media post. Students, if you're having problems connecting, we've got outdoor Wi-Fi zones on our campuses. That's right. So I know that a lot of uh, people are have been questioning if they can go back into the building. So here's the deal. We're opening our buildings to those who are completing their lab-based courses, but that doesn't mean it's open to every single person out there. So we have come up with a solution to offer free parking lot Wi-Fi zones uh, that allows students and prospective students to be able to connect to our internet. So once again, uh, not everyone's going to have access to the buildings unless you're completing your lab-based courses and you won't have the accessibility to the restrooms or to be able to charge your devices. So be sure to plan ahead of time. Make sure you uh, take the necessity uh, steps in order to make sure your devices are charged. And if you're interested in utilizing our free outdoor Wi-Fi zones, head to hccs.edu slash outdoor Wi-Fi to check out which campuses are offering this great free resource. Another thing we'll need you to check out is the virtual lobby. If you've got questions, anything ranging from financial aid to, uh, uh, you know, our, our payment plans, anything getting registered for the spring, uh, maybe some classes you're you're looking at in the in, uh, spring or or just any type of information, advising, counseling, you can go to the virtual lobby. It's very easy to do so. They have extended hours, uh, Mondays through Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and they're also open Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can sign up uh, for a Zoom phone call, a call back on your cell phone, or an email. Just let them know, and they will get back to you with answer on your question. For more information, go to our homepage or just go to hccs.edu slash virtual lobby. And uh, open houses are going to be happening soon as well. Yes, this these open houses are happy, happening virtually throughout the month of October. So if you need... Uh, if you have questions or just want to find out more information about HCC admissions application, how to enroll, financial aid, our new student orientation, which is mandatory, and advising and much, much more, go to hccs.edu slash information sessions to check out when you can participate in a virtual open house session. And Todd, we've got our college transfer fairs ha happening virtually as well during the month of October. That's right. Usually we hold them on our campuses. A number of universities attend and you can get a chance to get some inside information on the college that you may be looking to transfer to. We can't hold those on our campus this semester, but we're doing them virtually online. So we're talking about colleges like Baylor, Prairie View, a and Texas Tech, U of H, UT, all the branches of UT and University of St. Thomas and many, many more. They'll all make presentations. You can attend the presentations. There's Q&A sessions, so you can get your questions answered. Go to hccs.edu slash transfer fair for more information. Brittany, I'm going to take a little three-day weekend. going to take tomorrow off, so you and Frank are going to be handling the show. And you've got some special guests for tomorrow. That's right. So we will be joined by another college president. This time, it is our HCC Southeast College President, Dr. Melissa Gonzalez. And we look forward to hearing on how the transition back to having students on campus is going for her, as well as the college itself. And we'll be joined by Dr. Jimmy Adams, our resident poet, because it's Friday, Todd, even it's though you won't, be, you won't be here with us. So he will grace us with another perspective that he and only he can provide. You know, and I, Frank Cooper is going to be on the show. He's returning back. He took a little vacation, so he should be well rested at this point. I wish I was here to talk to him about Bill O'Brien getting fired. So we're going to have to save that to next week. So make sure you let Frank know we'll have that discussion next week on the show. So uh, have a good time tomorrow, Brittany. I'm going to take a three day weekend. We appreciate all of you joining us this morning. And Brittany and Frank will see you live tomorrow. As we sure will, Todd, live tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute. We'll see you then.